And hello YouTube, this is JS Man, I'm Smart, and I'm going to turn on a brand new video for Gaming with JS, and today we're here on Guild Wars 2, and we're going to take a look at how to make some more gold, I guess this is sort of Easy Gold Trick 2.0 number 21, I might name the video that, but it's how to make some gold in the new Ember Bay map, this method can also be applied to Bloodstone Fen, but with the addition of Ember Bay, and with the addition of Petrified Stumps, and more of these orbs floating around, you can actually really make a lot of money off of this method if you do it correctly, and if you have lots of Unbound Magic. In fact, what you're gonna need for this method is Unbound Magic and a Script Contract. Now, in Ember Bay, there are several script stashes scattered across the map. I will show you where they are. I will show you a map with all the dots on it that you can uh, check in the description. I'll leave a link to that so you can have it as a guide. You can get money off the script stashes. You get money off of un Unbound Magic as well if you don't need it for some of the other items that you can buy. And if you have extra blood rubies, you can actually salvage those also for Unbound Magic. Because with Unbound Magic, we're going to be buying packets and bundles. You can actually make some money off of that. And some pretty good money if you end up getting lucky as well. But let's go ahead and go over first the things that you'll need. And probably some of the best efficient things to do while you're doing uh, your things in Ember Bay and in Bloodstone Fen. With the addition of the heart vendors in Ember Bay, you can now actually buy some new gathering tools, which are very useful and very rewarding. These right here, the Unbound, Logging Axe, Harvesting Sickle, and Mining Pick, only cost 4,000 karma, and we all know how easy it is to get karma in, in the game. If you do fractals, if you do dungeons, if you do events in general, they all give you karma, so this isn't very expensive. But if you buy these harvesting tools I'm gonna to go ahead and buy you can actually get unbound magic from harvesting so usually if you were if you were to mine something for example there's there's a there's a place I can mine over here let me head over there instead of just getting the regular resources that you get such as the ore you can also get unbound magic and like I said in the beginning of the video, we do need Unbound Magic to make some gold. So this is a great tool to pick up. Okay, so I had to cut the uh, the video right there real quick because I actually forgot to equip my proper harvesting tool. So I harvested that ore and I didn't even have the correct tool. And you want to make sure you switch your tools, otherwise you won't get it. So let me go ahead and equip my tools real quick. But like I was saying, this is a great harvesting tool because anywhere in the world, whether you're in Corteria, whether you're in... Uh, the uh, Maguma areas or in the Fire Island chain areas, you will get unbound magic. And this is valuable currency that we can use to convert to gold. As you can see, we're getting unbound magic for every time we harvest something. So it can be an ore, it can be herbs, it can be trees, and you can get more unbound magic that way. Now, another way you can get unbound, unbound magic is by just completing events in the area. Whether it's in Bloodstone Fen or whether it may be in Ember Bay here, you can get more unbound magic from completing any events in the area. They give you some. And also, these little orbs that you see here, the ones that were in Bloodstone Fen, well, they have returned here. They've returned in Ember Bay. And these also give you Unbound Magic. As you can see, that one just gave me Unbound Magic. So while you're going around the map, make sure you gather things with your with your new tools and make sure you pick up these orbs because not only do they give you experience, which is really well, which is really good for uh, leveling your masteries, but they also give you Unbound Magic, which is what we need. Now, if you take a look at your dailies, we do know there are daily Bloodstone Fen and there's daily Ember Bay achievements. If you complete these achievements, you also gain Unbound Magic, but more importantly, you gain Blood Rubies and you gain p Petrified Wood. Now, these things can be salvaged for even more Unbound Magic. Now, be aware, you can get some pretty cool things with Blood Rubies if you need some Ascended Rings or you need an Ascended Backpack or an Ascended Amulet you can use blood rubies for that. However, there are other ways to get ascended um, gear, so if you don't really care for those pieces of gear, you can just salvage your blood rubies and you'll basically get unbound magic from it. As you can see, I got 33 unbound magic. The same with these uh, petrified wood. You can also salvage these for even more unbound magic. So if you don't need the un if you don't need the petrified wood for some of the minis, perhaps if you don't need it for the uh, ascended accessory, if you don't need it for any of the karma boosters or 
If you don't need it for any of the vendor items, if you're not interested in those items, then you may as well salvage these because these also give you unbound magic. As you can see, I just got 43 unbound magic. So that's the key. To farm more unbound magic, just salvage these things if you don't need them. And you get these from completing the daily achievements here. Now, just like with blood rubies that you can get in Bloodstone Fen, Petrified Wood you can get anywhere in Ember Bay. You can get them from completing the dailies, which I've already said. You can also get them from uh, Skrilla's chest here. Now, sometimes the Skrilla's chest event is already going. So what you want to do is you actually want to check the beach area. The beach area is right over here. In this little area, there's going to be an event where Skrilla, the NPC, will be walking along this beach digging up loot. And at the end of the event, there's going to be a big chest and you can get a good amount of petrified wood there as well. So you want to make sure you check the beach area when you're walking around this, in this place because if the chest is there, you don't, need to have, you, you don't need to have participated in the event to get the chest. So just walk by here, look for the chest, and uh, something's attacking me. What's attacking me? That was strange. Okay then. But yeah, like I said, just check this area here. This area of the map to see if the chest is anywhere. Uh, or this area of the map. Right, right around the shore here, check if there's a chest. You can get some more petrified wood. Which you can then salvage or uh, to get unbound magic. Or you can keep them for anything that you're going for from the vendors in this map. And lastly, to get even more petrified wood, uh, one thing that this map does offer, once again, is hearts. And with these hearts, you can actually buy petrified wood. But before we take a look at how you can buy petrified, one thing I might want to mention since I'm just passing by here is that there are petrified stumps now in this area as well. Now these petrified stumps are across the map. I have not found a proper gathering route for these petrified stumps. But as you're doing your hearts in the area, as you're walking around collecting your scrit stash, which I'm going to go over in just a second, you're going to see a lot of petrified stumps here. Make sure you have your unbound uh, axe on, because as you can see, we're getting unbound magic and we're getting petrified wood here. So you do get... In fact, I, I think I think these uh, petrified stumps give you unbound magic by default, so you may not even need you may not even need to use your unbound uh, harvesting tools because they already I think these already give them by default. But just thought it'd be worth noting that you do get petrified wood from these petrified stumps, and like I said, once again, if you don't need them, you may as well salvage them for the unbound magic, unless you're actually keeping them for one of the items uh, in this map that you want to get. So here we are in front of the heart vendor. Like I said, you can buy, after you completed the hearts, you can buy petrified wood from the vendor here for 2000 karma. So this is a good way also to get your daily petrified wood from vendors. You can only buy it once. So right after you finish the heart, you may as well come over here and use some karma to buy the wood and you can salvage it then once again if you need it. Now you might be wondering, okay, well now I know how to get all this unbound magic. Now I know how to get all these petrified wood stumps. I know what to do with the blood rubies. I know what to do with all these currencies. What's the point of having all this unbound magic though? Well, what you can do with unbound magic is actually buy packets and bundles. Now these were introduced in Bloodstone Fen, but you can actually buy them from Ember Bay as well. Now, if you head to uh, this waypoint right here, it's the main waypoint in uh, Fire Island Chain, Ember Bay. The first waypoint you actually get to when you enter the map. Uh, it, there's a vendor right over here that sells the bundles and the packets here. Now, the rare kind gives you rare crafting materials. They will have a chance of dropping 10 tier 6 materials, which is a lot of gold you can actually make off of that for only 40 silver. If you get 10 tier 6 materials, if it's powerful blood, that's like, what, 7, 8 gold that you made a lot of profit. However, with the package, you have a chance of getting basic crafting materials with a chance of ascended materials. This includes the wood that you have. This includes the leather, the scraps. Those are also very valuable. So you can make a lot of gold off of that too, especially considering the fact that you're paying so much less unbound magic. Now, there was a really great post on Reddit that described which one of these is better and how much value you're getting per bundle or per packet. And they're actually fairly close so one of these is almost the same profit as the other one. However, 
the packet actually comes in a little bit ahead by a few more silver. So if you really want to get maximum profit, I do suggest getting the packets. However, you can try your luck with the bundles and if you're feeling the bundles are really good for you, then go ahead and go for them. So that's what I would invest my un Unbound Magic in, one of those two items. You can definitely try the bundle out if you'd like or the packets out if you'd like. I do know in the beginning of the patch, the packets were very valuable, but perhaps some of the leather has dropped in price. So just try each of those items out see which one you like best, see which one you think is you more profit, and uh, stick with it. That's how I would use my Unbound Magic if I don't need any of the items in this area. Now, another secure way of making gold, uh, the packets and the bundles are sort of gambles because you are throwing money in to get items back, and by chance you may get items that give you more money, by chance you may get items that don't give you more money or you break even. So one of the more secure ways to make money in this map is through the Script Worker Contract. Now in this area right here, there actually, there's actually a heart that you can complete right here. You complete this heart and the script will offer you several items to buy with Karma. One of these items is the script worker contract. So I'm just going to go ahead and fin finish this heart real quick and I'll be back. So once you've completed this specific heart here, you can actually talk to the vendor. And uh, obviously you can buy your wood again if you need more wood, which I'm going to go ahead and do. And you have the script worker contract here for one of the petrified wood in 980 karma. Go ahead and buy that. And you can actually buy several of these. Uh, the fact that they only cost about 980 karma, they make them very cheap. And this is a great way to use your petrified wood as well. If you don't like the unbound magic method, if you don't like salvaging your petrified wood to do unbound magic to buy the pack, as if you don't if you're not finding as much profit as you thought you would, you can always use it to buy the script contracts here. So I'm gonna buy a few of them. And now we should have, uh, we should have six of these. And now all you have to do is basically look for the script stashes. Now these are all over the map. In the description of this video, though, I do have a map linked from the wiki that shows you where a lot of the uh, script stashes are. Uh, if you're just coming from the vendor, though, there's usually some down here in this area by the beach. There's some script stashes there. We're gonna go ahead and go to some of them just so I can show you what type of materials you can get from these stashes and how much profit you can actually make. So there we have a script stash right there. If you have the overhead names on for the items, you can see them very easily just by walking around the map when you're doing your uh, tree farming or just doing the events or hearts. So there's one usually always up here. We can open this and we can use one of our contracts here and the script will basically take it. Now after that the script will go away but you will get the item in return here. Uh, we are down to five contracts but now we have salvage debris. We can go and open that and as you can see these are the items we get. Sometimes you get the balloons, sometimes you get reclaimed wood like this. Uh, reclaimed wood used to sell for a lot more right now. It's only sold for about six silver though. Uh, the, the balloons that you get they tend to sell for a lot. You also have a chance of getting ectoplasms from these and you have a chance of getting petrified wood and several other cool items that actually can give you some profit. The main thing is just looking around for these stashes and going to find them. So here I have a few more squid stashes that I've that I did that I dug up with my contract. If we go ahead and open these up, you can see the other materials that we get. We get more of these woods. We also get some salvageable metal, and we get some other items that we can also salvage and some dust. Like I said, the balloons are a bit more rare to find, but this is a good way to have a chance at them. And some of the items that you do get here sell for a decent amount. So that's pretty much how you can make some gold in Bloodstone, Fen, and Ember Bay through the Unbound Magic and the packets and bundles and through the script worker contract to open some of these script stashes. It's not a lot of money you can make, but it is some extra cash on the side. There's obviously a lot better methods to make money, a lot better methods that will actually give you more gold per hour. But I thought I'd add this to our little series of gold tricks because this is a way to make some gold. And if you want to add some variety to your gold making methods, and it's pretty fun to do as well. Script stashes are new and the contract's very good. And if you happen to get some doubloons, you can actually make a lot of money out of it. If you happen to get some ascended materials from some of these packets, you can actually make a lot of money out of it. So uh, go ahead and try these out and let me know what you think in the comment section if you like these
you have any questions or comments, if you had some experiences with the packets or with the bundles, leave your comment down below as well. I'll definitely be down there answering any questions you have and talking with you guys as usual. If you haven't subscribed to Sony yet, go and subscribe. Lots of other Guild Wars 2 content on the channel. Lots of other gold guides, game guides. We do news discussions. We do a lot of Guild Wars 2 content, a lot of gaming content in general. So if you're interested, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. You can also donate a dollar to my Patreon page. Anything as low as that is very helpful, very much appreciated. Click the card in the top right corner of the screen. It'll bring you to the page. And if you want to check out my vlogging channel, tutorials channel, music channel, advice channel, or the gaming channel, which is this one right here, you can go ahead and click the links in the description as well as on the end card. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GSMO Smart. And I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.